Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to go over a quick way to save resources while producing tanks. I know I made the video about don't convert from stockpile, and as you can see, I'm not wrong about that. I am producing more tanks currently by just putting all of the factories on the tank I want to build rather than making some obsolete and then converting. However, I'm only spending nine factories worth of resources when I'm converting versus 24 down here. Now, this is being done with the two conversion techs. But this is a major way you can sacrifice a little bit of production for a lot of resources. I figured I'd end this off with a little bit of math. You guys seem to like it when I bring up Excel. So here we have a couple of scenarios and their math. First with the light tanks, this 2.45 is basically the cheapest you can make a light tank using the improved light tank chassis. So that would be this design, heavy machine gun, one man turret, wheeled suspension, riveted armor, gasoline. This is the cheapest you can get it, 2.45. And then you're converting it to some real design. So slapping a three man turret on, maybe you're using the close support gun, advanced radio, some machine guns maybe. Maybe you're using a stabilizer and you're going to swap to some sort of tracked suspension. Stick with the riveted armor. Up the engine and the armor and now you're at 12.9. So clearly I was making something a little bit cheaper than this for that example. But it still works. So 12.9. Let's change the math to 12.9. 12.96. So that means I need... Okay, let's up that to 14. Up this to 18. So when we make that change... With 18 factories, I can either get 7.3 tanks or I can get 6.21. So that's just straight better to convert if you have both conversion techs. Even with one conversion tech, one conversion tech changes this down to 0.4. You're basically producing the same amount at this point, but with the second conversion tech making this 0.8, you're in such a better place. And it's, that's when it's really worthwhile. So that's, that's with light tanks, and light tanks are actually completely fine in single player. This has a good amount of soft attack on it. It's quite fast, perfectly fine. So then... With the medium tanks, you can do two things. So this is the cheapest medium tank design you can do. We're using bogey suspension because you can't get the wheeled suspension. Same gun, same turret. That doesn't matter. 4.0 cost. And then maybe you want to make a an expensive medium tank. This is using an improved medium cannon. Perfectly fine in single player. Welded armor. So this will be largely unpierceable by the AI. You'd want to swap the riveted armor and take off the sloped armor if you're playing in multiplayer and bring that cost way down. But against the AI, armor actually has value because it's possible to make an unpierceable tank. So with this design, it's 18.48. So I've got that set up here. Actually, I don't have the eight in there. Let's get the eight in there. So this is with the 80% bonus. So this is just the cheapest gun. And when you do this, you still need to pay for 18 factories worth of resources. So that's still 75% of the original resource cost. So the other alternative is you make this gun slightly more expensive, makes it less effective. But you use the one-man medium turret, you put the improved medium cannon on it because it's the cheapest gun that has a tungsten and a chromium cost to it. So in this option, we're producing slightly less tanks. We're kind of in that weird spot where the two numbers aren't going to line up properly. That's close enough. So we're going to actually produce slightly more using this method. But here's the thing. With this method, only 10 of your 27 factories actually need to import chromium and tungsten. And that's what I was talking about earlier. You only need 37% of the import. So if you were spending 10 factories importing all of this tungsten, you're probably going to need four. But tungsten and chromium, if you're spending 10 factories per resource, which is going to get you 80, which would mean you'd have 80 here. So, so at 56 factories, that lines up quite nicely. You're losing 0.5 a day. At 56 factories, if you're playing Germany, that's, that's two resources per factory, 112, which means you're spending 14 factories. Here, you're only doing that for 21 factories, which is five or six, depending on if you decide on importing that last amount. So if we round that down, you're saving eight factories worth of importing. These numbers change, of course, if you made the cheap tank, which was about 14 and a half. The larger the divide between your base and what you're converting to, the more it makes sense. At this point, you're starting to get to the point where it doesn't quite make sense. But when you're up at like 18, it starts to make sense. And it really makes sense for light tanks. So the main use of this is saving production if you're going to build expensive tanks or if you have major resource constraints. So there's, there's an alternative thing you can do is the Soviet Union. And that is you use the regular medium cannon. That gives you a cost of 6.4. Let's say your final cost is 16. This is going to save you 33 factories worth of tungsten. You don't care about the chromium cost of going from the medium cannon to the improved medium cannon. But you care about the tungsten cost. So you can make this tank cheaper. If you're going to be converting to the improved high velocity gun, which has two tungsten cost, 
then you can start with the basic high velocity gun, which also has two tungsten cost, so that you save all of that tungsten. You're going to still have to spend the chromium, but you're still saving a significant amount. Anyways, that's a good way of saving resources if you're playing as one of those countries that has a limited amount of tungsten or chromium or both.